In this video, I'm going to be talking about how to be a jazz musician. <laughs> it's Paul Toby here from jazzmental.com as someone who's been a jazz musician for a very long time and a professional recording artist. I think I have some insights into this subject that can potentially or probably help you. So the whole concept of being a jazz musician is far more than just playing an instrument. There is a lot of things to consider. And if you're thinking about being a jazz musician, you're going to want to learn and pay attention to the 10 things that I'm going to share with you in this video. Each one is critical. By the time you get to the end, you'll know exactly what to do. Let's get started. All right, so I've got 10 things that every jazz musician needs to know and I've been making a study of jazz and the music business for a very long time. These insights are my own and they come from personal experience. I hope you get a lot out of this. Let's start with number one. Number one is know what kind of jazz musician you want to be. So there's many different types and I'm not just talking about good ones and bad ones. I'm talking about jobbing musicians, recording artists, studio artists, whatever. Think about the musician that you want to be long term. Pick the goal. If you don't know where you're going, any road will take you there. So picking a proper goal and thinking to yourself, if I were to spend my life doing this thing day after day, what would it be? And of course, that could be anything. I chose to be a recording artist. I think it's a great choice. Touring, making albums, getting out on the road and just kind of hanging out with people and playing concerts and things. I think it's a great life. But again, it's up to you. So decide which one you want and be very crystal clear about it because the reason why people don't get what they want in life is because they just don't know what it is. You have to choose. And as soon as you're crystal clear on that, it'll all come into focus in its own good time. Let's move on to number two. Commit to a practice schedule. Now, I totally get that you understand if you're going to be a good jazz musician, you're going to want to practice. The thing is, when are you going to do that? And I think the best way to approach that is to schedule your time. Live by the calendar. If you're going to do two hours a day, do it at the same two hours every day so that it doesn't conflict with other things. I'm quite self-disciplined. I've learned that over the years that if I focus on practicing at a specific time, I'm pretty good about making that time. Of course, there are times when other things conflict, but you can always replace that time. Live by the calendar, get your schedule in order, and you absolutely need to practice. Jazz is one of those higher art forms that requires you to be quite good at your craft, and people can tell the difference whether you think that or not. All right, number three, do a lot of listening. Listen to other artists' recordings, go to concerts, start hanging out in clubs, and hear how the pros do it. It rubs off. And the more you listen, the more your ears get trained to the sound, the more you start to hear interplay amongst instruments, the more you start to get involved intrinsically and artistically in the music itself. So you've got to do a lot of listening. I'm not exactly sure who you're listening to. I could potentially make some suggestions. So if you want me to do that, just post some comments below and I'll see what I can dig up. All right, let's move on. Number four, figure out what makes you different and do it quickly. Now, I totally get that in the early stages of learning to be a jazz musician, you're probably learning chords and scales and copying what other people are doing but eventually you're going to need your own sound. And I would like you to start thinking about that sooner rather than later. If you sound like everybody else, you're not going to have a great career. You really want to stand out. What does that mean? What does that look like? I've heard musicians that are actually not that great, but you can recognize their sound and they stand out amongst other artists, especially vocalists. I've heard a lot of vocalists make great careers out of jazz that really aren't the greatest singers, but they have very distinctive voices. So whatever instrument you choose, try to figure out what your style is and what your distinctive sound is, and that will stand out a lot. Okay, number five, this was really important. Get some training, invest in yourself. The more you invest in yourself, the better the outcome will be. You're typically going to make a lot of mistakes because you don't necessarily know ahead of time the mistakes that you're making. That's why getting some training from other artists, 
You could actually subscribe to my channel here on YouTube. And I've got a lot of great advice for young musicians, older musicians, professionals, non-professionals, whatever. I'm a pro. I, I understand the business. I understand what it takes to be a recording artist. I actually had a contract. So if you have any questions about that, you can certainly ask me. But what I would suggest is at some point, you're going to have to invest in yourself. You probably are not going to be that successful doing it the trial and error way because you're going to make a lot of errors and you don't know the errors that you're making. Okay, number six, learn how to run your own business. Now, a jazz musician doesn't really work for anyone on an ongoing basis, yet you are working for concert promoters, you're working for club owners, you're working for whoever's hiring you. So it really is in and of itself a self-employment situation. It's not necessarily a job because you can choose whether you want to do it or not but it is self-employment and to that end, you have to take care of your own finances, your own booking. You just have to understand the implications of what running your own business means. So you can start to write off portions of your home, like business use of home expenses, those kinds of things. So there's a lot to learn about the business side of it. And frankly, I've seen a lot of musicians who don't know anything about that and they struggle a lot. So get some business knowledge in you. There are some videos here on this channel that I talk about the business side of music, so I would suggest highly that you check some of those out. Okay, number seven. Yes, it's a good idea to be a sideman because you can get lots of gigs and gigs pay the bills, but you're gonna wanna be a leader too. Leadership is far more than just being the best musician in the group. Oftentimes, the best musician is not always the leader. So it doesn't really matter whether you're great or not. What matters is, is that you're creating something. You're creating an ensemble, a project, a tour, whatever that you are in charge of. Now, the reason why you wanna do this is because as soon as you get the leadership bug, you'll soon determine that the leaders are responsible and the leaders make the most money. It's not a good idea just to go on somebody else's gig and get paid whatever, 50 bucks an hour, it's not that great. What you wanna do is find your own thing, get your own tours together, get your own funding, be a business owner and a business leader and a music leader as well. Leadership has its rewards and I would suggest that you look into that big time. All right, number eight, start recording yourself as soon as possible. It's tough to know how good you sound until you actually record yourself. And I would suggest you do that immediately because as soon as you start recording yourself, you're gonna to start to hear things that you don't like. And the only way you can fix those things is by hearing them over and over again. It's like public speakers. Public speakers don't know all of the filler words that they're using until they actually listen to themselves. So what I would suggest is you record everything that you do, listen back to it, even if it's only five, 10 minutes, and you start to get a sense of where you're missing out, where you're not maybe in tune or whether you're not following the beat or whether your rhythm is not clear or perhaps your soloing is a lot suspect. Anyway, record, record, record. One of the most important things you can do to get better at your craft. All right, number nine, get involved in the music business, get involved with other people, get in the click, start hanging out at clubs, do that stuff, but don't, and I repeat, there's a lot of negative musicians, don't listen to them. They have a lot of pent up frustration, jazz musicians especially, because typically jazz musicians struggle. I mean, there's a lot of jazz musician jokes about, you know, like how did the jazz musician make a million dollars? Started with two million. So, I mean, there's a lot of this sort of self fulfilling prophecy that you're never gonna do well. I never found that, I did quite well, and I'm proud of that. But I also learned to stay away from negative people and naysayers because they can really drag you down. So whatever they say, just say, hey, thanks for sharing, move on. Don't listen to them and don't follow their advice because they don't really know what they're talking about. And then finally, number 10, and I think this makes a lot of sense, get as many gigs as you can, even if they're not jazz gigs. So yeah, go play some professional gigs, do some theater gigs, whatever you can get as a musician, take it because it makes you a more well-rounded player and you learn a lot of things stylistically from all of these different situations. So whether it's 
the style of music that they're playing or the situation that they're playing in, all of that eventually rubs off and it's going to help you be a better, more well-rounded, more professional type of musician. Okay, so that's my list of 10. If you want to add to the list, that would be great. Just add your comments below. Of course, if you're not a jazz musician, maybe you could make some pointers, but uh, it's really a good idea to give some professional advice to people. So if you've got some experience, we're certainly open to that. If you have any questions or comments about any of this that I've talked about or any of the other stuff on my channel, or you have a suggestion for a topic, write it below. I'll be sure to get back to you. Thank you so much for your time.